Uh, just here today with Luke Bowman um, at the property Springfield near Baraba. Uh, we're talking today about a project that, um, that uh, Luke's initiated as part of drought management planning whereby he's utilising some of his tropical grasses um, and cutting them for silage and wrapping them and having them as a stored um, livestock feed for when times are, are tough or we uh, are in in another round of um, or period of drought. So it's certainly a, an underutilised resource um, where producers don't have the high stock numbers to um, feed the quality, uh, feed the, the tropicals or to, to graze on the tropicals um, when the, um, that they're, they're at their prime um, quality. So uh, just going to, to talk to Luke about uh, what he's done um, here at, his, uh, at the property Springfield. So, uh, so thanks, Luke. So, um, just want you to uh, to tell us about the um, the cutting of the tropical grasses that you did earlier this year as part of um, your your sort of drought management plan, having that that feed in um, in supply for when you need it. So, uh, so what did to just uh, talk through the the process? Um, I guess the time of cutting, um, and also uh, how you went about the um, the cutting of the the grasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after all the rain there in January, uh, early Feb February. Uh, a bit like most people, we had an excess of feed um, in the subtropical grasses. Uh, not enough livestock to stock it. Uh, so we sort of just explored the, the idea of uh, making silage out of the subtropical grasses. Uh, so there in about the start, like in the beginning of February, we. Uh, yeah, we laid down one paddock. Um, yeah, I had uh, had a contractor um, come and do that. Um, yeah, he used a, a disc mower, a mower conditioner. Um, yeah, so he cut and uh, baled that uh, and wrapped it, wrapped it in the paddock, and then uh, he moved it from the paddock uh, to our like, storage compound um, where we're storing it. Uh, we cut it, it was quite moist during the time when we cut it. Um, the, there was big dews and there was, um, you know, because of all the rain, it was just the, the whole atmosphere was quite moist. So uh, I think we cut, um, you know, one morning and I think it was 48 hours before we were sort of able to, you know, the conditions were right to bale again. Uh, we turned once in that, uh, like raked it once in that in that period. So the day after, um, yeah, and that that seemed to be uh, the ideal conditions at that time for for, for baling the silage. Yeah. So the the growth stage of the plant was is really important. So uh, as the uh, the plant goes from um, um, early growth stage to stem elongation to reproduction and then into full senescence the, the seed that the the quality of the feed drops off significantly so um, you were able to cut in that that pre um, stem elongation stage which is um, yep. which is really really important for, mm -hmm. your, for your maximum quality yeah no, we yeah we we're pretty mindful of that uh, we did we did two paddocks in total uh, the first paddock yeah we were able to get the timing right um, yeah and, it, and it, and it shows in the results that we got um, from the test results. Uh, the second paddock we did, it sort of st was starting to run into st stem elongation, um, and that's when the quality it dropped off a little bit. Um, but yeah, getting it getting it in that growth in the in that initial growth phase is uh, you know is very important. Yeah, so the, um, the feed quality test that we, we had done through the local land services um, was a great sort of baseline to have, particularly to look at when you do go to utilise that feed. Um, it'll be then interesting to, to note you know, what sort of changes or any um, deterioration in, in energy or, or protein, but certainly um, having that initial will be good because I have seen where people have utilised pastures um, in the past that they've cut um, at different stages and without knowing what it was initially it, it doesn't give you that that un ideal idea of where it's you know what it was when it first went into wrap and then mm -hmm. when you actually go to utilise it so yeah. so were there any challenges um, with the the cutting of it or the baling transferring it around the paddock anything lessons learnt if you, that you might do differently 
Um, yeah, well, we had we had a contractor uh, do our first paddock, um, like cutting it. Uh, he had a disc mower. Um, here we have a few rocks, um, and he sort of he didn't like that too much on, with his disc mower conditioner. So we had an old sickle bar mower conditioner that we did the second paddock with. So uh, we had to end up doing that, cutting it ourselves on the second paddock. Um, yeah, just. Uh, just because, um, yeah, just because of the rock in the paddock. Uh, that was one thing that we do, yeah. Um, second thing would be just making sure I get the timing right. Uh, yeah, if, I'm, if you're gonna make a decision, you, you sort of have to be a little bit organized to, um, to, to do this. Um, yeah, so, cause you wanna be getting in that initial growth phase uh, of the plant, uh, you know, to, to, get, to get the best quality out of your silage. So that that would be my uh, recommendation is um, yeah, trying to trying to get it in that initial 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 growth stage. Yeah, look, and that's that is so so important, and that's that's really really good to hear you say that. Yeah. Um, so when the uh, the the paddock started to regrow, did you any did it seem to still um, grow quite vigorously, even having been cut right across it? It it really um, re recovered quite well. Yep, uh, we did. When we originally started cutting with the disc mower, we were cutting quite, quite low. Um, it was sort of, I think it was about two two inches. I think uh, we then had to lift that up, just because of the little bit of rock we got um, up to about as high as the disc mower would go, which I think was about four, like ninety mils. Um, yeah. So and then we cut cut the. Uh, Cut the paddock like that. Rest half the paddock like that. Yeah, we had a, like a noticeable um, recovery from the higher cut um, grass. Uh, yeah, and then we were able to graze it a couple of times after that, um, and it was quite good because then that kept that in the in the that early growth phase. Uh, so we still had the had good quality grass, um, whereas a lot of the other paddocks just ran you know ran to head. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Look, and that's that's really important. That the the, um, the idea of having the you know doing the the silage or, or hay cutting them is you know keeping that plant in that phase where it is at its maximum quality, um, where you haven't got the the stock numbers to to deal with that. Otherwise, it, it does. It goes to reproduction and then into seed head very quickly, and and then your your quality has dropped um, right off. And that, that was a challenge for for many people um, this year. Um, and um, you know, for those that did get round to cutting it at a later stage, then um, yeah, some of the feed quality results are you know, certainly indicative of the the reduced quality from that earlier stage. Um, so in terms of feeding out, or not, I was going to say, in terms of storage of the, the bales, um, what's, your, um, what's working best for you here? Um, well, when we, the first paddock we cut, we wrapped the bales in the paddock and then transported them back into a, into a storage paddock. Um, that seemed to work quite well. We did have a little bit of damage uh, which, to, the, to the wrap, which we had to sort of go back and fix. Uh, the next paddock we uh, baled, we transported all the bales back to, back to the storage paddock and then um, wrapped them at the paddock, which seemed to be a um, lot, better, lot better option, um, kept, kept everything intact. Um, so they're telling me that these bales should, we, I think we put six layers of wrap, wrap on, uh, these should last three years um, with the wrap. So, uh, so Luke, cutting the uh, having the tropical grasses here for silage is uh, is really important in terms of you know for fitting in with your drought management strategy. Can you just um, outline how the um, the uh, silage will help you um, in periods of dry times? Um, yeah, well, we were previously we were sort of relying on um, cotton seed and and buying a little bit of hay. Hay in uh, that seemed to work in previous um, previous dry times. Uh, didn't quite well. It was quite expensive uh, in the, just the last drought just gone. So yeah, um, yeah. Just looking at alleviating that cost. Um, 
you know, when when another dry dry time comes around. Um, yeah, like when cotton seed, you know, got up to five six hundred dollars a ton, it sort of you know, it, uh, it starts to get pretty expensive. Hay was pretty expensive, as everyone knows. So yeah, uh, making our own uh, when we've got excess, uh, you know, feed around. Um, yeah, it certainly makes sense. Uh, so, uh, look, thanks, Luke, for your, your time today in sharing um, your experience with the, the silage um, and cutting the tropicals. It's certainly uh, something that we're certainly excited about and, and producers are as well because it, I know although it has been done a little bit in the past, it's just been a little bit reactive and, and we haven't always had one known what the quality of it was when it actually got cut and, and wrapped. Um, and so just building up that, that understanding and, and working out what works well, I guess some lessons learnt from producers like yourself and being able to share those um, thoughts and ideas will help increase other landholders in the northwest to, to, to do the same because, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's certainly a lot of tropicals around. There's been, you know, there, some have been there for a long time. Others are getting planted each year. And um, with the lower stock numbers, you know, as a result of the drought, Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of tropicals, you know, get underutilised, I guess, uh, go past that, that quality stage uh, and then f into full, you know, seed set, um, which is such a lost resource for, mm. for such an amazing um, feed. So if we can, uh, I guess, increase people's um, awareness, understanding of how to, um, to cut the silage um, or make hay, then uh, it is going to be, um, it's going to be really useful in... Um, in utilising that, utilising and storing that resource um, for dry periods, which is um, which is when you need that that quality feed, and it can be very other other sources can be very expensive. So, uh, thanks Good heaps thanks. for your time today.